got an igniter tweaker in, and the owner says tube light, tubes light up, but no sound. Um, hopefully, I won't have to be the bearer of bad news. Many of the tweakers, the power transformers die, both the 15 and the 40. And um, uh, not to go too far down any particular rabbit holes, but it seems that uh, the company that makes these spec'd out the same transformer for the Japanese and U.S. market. And while it's fine at 100 volts AC mains, the 120 can kill it. It's very common to have bad power transformers. Um, but we will open it up and see. Perhaps it's a, a fuse or a screen grid resistor or some other thing. I would love to be able to fix this. They're really nice sounding versatile amps. Um, if uh, the company had spec'd out a better power transformer, they probably never have any major issues. Uh, it's very expensive to change the power transformer on them because of the way that they're built. You've got to undo a whole lot of stuff and uh, there is not a direct drop in. They all involve some degree of dr drilling. But anyway, let's see what's going on with this one. I've mentioned this in other videos, but it, you can't say it too many times. If you go in here to these large screws with a number two screwdriver and there's all that slack, you're likely to strip those screws. The number three screwdriver fits. Now there can be Phillips versus Posa drive in some cases. You also have to be aware of that, but in general, just getting number two, number three right saves a lot of problems down the line. There's a lot of dust on top of the chassis. I'll clean that off. Uh, before I do anything else, I'm going to point out the, the fuse locations. One in that drawer, and then one right here. And I'm using different size flathead screws to, to get those out. Hmm, where am I? This one doesn't want to come out easily. See, that's tight, and that's loose. That's tight, that's loose, and the lo it was already loose when it came in, so that might be the entire issue. Let's see. I'll make sure it has the right value fuse in there, if I can get it out. There it goes. It's a little bit chewed up. Someone's been in there with too small a blade. 250 milliamp, fast blow. And I'm trying to see what it says on here. On the fuse that's actually in here. All right. It's a 250 uh, uh, milliamp uh, time delay fuse rather than fast blow, which is probably just fine. Let me confirm that that fuse is good. It's possible that the only thing wrong with this amp is that that fuse was not all the way tight. But I'm going to make sure everything else is good in the amp. If it turns out that that's what was the, causing the problem and uh, nothing else seems wrong. I will waive the bench fee and just charge a half hour embarrassment fee. Make the owner check these things more thoroughly in the future. And the mains fuse should be a 1.6 amp that's what's in there, and it's good too. I know that watching me fiddle with fuse, fuses does not make for a great video, but this is the crucial stuff. And remember, when this came in, this fuse right here was out. When it's all the way in, it's farther in. So it was not fully engaged before. While I'm in here, the effects loop return has got a missing uh, nut and washer. Uh, I've got those. I'll have to see if it's the Cliff or the Neutrik, but I've got, I should have those. Let's see what's going on inside the app. 
well, I went to connect the speaker jack to it so I could uh, power it up. And the speaker jack nuts were really loose, just like led to the missing uh, send jack. So I'm just going to tighten these up. Let me check the input jack real quick. Also loose. So, so while it's on the bench, I'll also make sure that all the front uh, panel nuts are tight, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe, maybe I won't, I'll still waive the bench fee, but charge an hour rather than 30 minutes. Let's, let's see what we see. All right, powering up with a current limiter, with amp in standby, the front LED comes on. Let's take it out of standby. Very low volume sound. Let's see what the knobs are at. Let's see what everything does. All right, that's a master. So this should be quite loud at this point. What does that switch do? I expect we probably have a bad tube. So this wasn't just the fuse being not, not being all the way engaged. Let's see, we got two heater fuses here. They're fine. Um, there's not a lot to the amp. It's got three 12AX7s and two 6L6s. I'm kind of looking through to see if everything is tight. It's got so many quick connects. All right, so the next thing I want to do, the master volume up, is uh, listen as I test for voltages on plates of preamp tubes and see where the level drops down. It's a quick and dirty way to work your way through a circuit. All right, so B3 is going to be the phase inverter. Pin 1. 212. I'm not hearing anything through it. I'm hearing it through the speaker a little bit when I measure pin 6, which is 204 volts. I measure pin one, 212, I'm barely hearing it. Let's see what happens if I measure DC at the grid. Should hear some noise. It's real quiet compared to what I should be hearing. So it may be a problem with the output tubes. Let's do the same thing for the other preamp tubes. Much more for V1. Much more for V. Well, this one says V1 as well. That's confusing. Different boards. So V3 is the one where it's quiet for some reason. I don't have the schematic for this. Let me poke around a little bit and figure out what's going on here. It may be a problem with the output tubes. Well, uh, well, I initially set out to do this without charging the full bench fee. I was feeling altruistic. I don't like charging a lot on relatively inexpensive apps, but uh, this just moved into kind of get at least the bench fee territory. I pulled the uh, stock 6v6s and I'm pointing these out because they th these are smoked. You can't see the internal. You can't really tell if it if there's any problem with the getter, or if there's any problem with the plates, you can't really see anything. They're both like this. And the reason I pulled them is when the amp was on and those two tubes were in place, I was measuring voltages. Pin three on each one has, uh, let me connect my ground so I can measure that. Pin three on each one, it's got just over 400. And pin uh, four has got about 390. But pin five, 
when the tubes were in place, pin 5 of V2 was at negative 4 volts, and pin 5 of V4 was at positive 10 volts. Now, this is a cathode bias amp. Neither grid should have any voltage on it, not to mention negative 4 and positive 10. So it can be one of uh, three things. It could be the coupling caps on the output of the phase inverter. One of them is leaking DC. It could be a faulty grid leak resistor, which is uh, right on those grids. Um, in, in a fixed bias amp, it would be going to a negative voltage across that, but this is just going to ground. Or it could be bad 6L6s, sorry, 6V6s. So before I go any further, I'm going to put in a, a test pair of 6V6s and see where they're at. Um, because if these have had uh, incorrect voltages on their grids because of a failure in the coupling caps uh, for a prolonged amount of time, uh, these could be bad even if they were not the root cause of the issue. And I'm going to put in a potentially sacrificial pair of test 6v6s to see. It could also just be a faulty old ruby uh, that has a, a leaking into its grid from its uh, screen or, or plate. Um, but this is a fairly simple cathode biased output. Shouldn't be anything really too tricky to deal with. We'll power it off, put some tubes in, and see where we're at. Okay, an oldish pair of groove tubes are in place. Got the uh, meter probe at pin 5 of V2, where I had negative 4, taking out a standby. All right, 0 volts, and I hear sound at the output now. And at the other grid, 0 volts. So definitely a bad pair of 6 V6s. And I'm going to make sure, as everything warms up, that there is no leakage through those coupling caps. I don't want there to be a pre-existing condition in the, in the uh, power section that kills 6v6s. Testing for microphonics. Because I don't want to sell the guy a new pair of 6v6s and then have them get eaten by a fault in the amp. Uh, I say sell the guy. I don't sell tubes uh, in terms of uh, retail or markup. I procure good tubes, and I test said tubes, and I pass along the tubes at the price I pay with shipping, and my markup is actually the labor involved of testing them and putting them through, through their paces. But now that the amp is working, let's see how it sounds. I still got to change out that, uh, replace that missing jack, and talk to the owner and let him know what I found, and uh, order a pair of Sovtech or Electroharmonic 6v6s. I guess it helps if I plug in to the app. I've got so many cables going at once. Let's see if I can do this without getting all my cables tied up. Pot's a little dirty. Yeah, the pots need to be cleaned. clean some pots, tighten some hardware, replace that missing uh, uh, nut and washer on the send jack, get a new pair of 6v6s six ordered, and then when it's all put together, we'll do a little playing video on these. Uh, it's odd to me uh, because I was a tire kicker, kicker who would, you know, look at Porsche catalogs and uh, Fender catalogs and drool over 
Grunes guitars and all these things that I couldn't afford. My attention was always on the the 58 Les Paul or the pre-war Martin. And so I put up videos of 63 AC30s or 69 Marshall Plexis and I get a pretty good amount of view, views. I put up Blues Juniors. I put up, you know, freaking Boss Katanas and I get infinitely more views than I do on what I, I would consider the, the real gems of, that are featured on the channel. So obviously there is interest in the, the inexpensive apps out there. So I will do a playing video on this tweaker the same way I do a playing video on a 60s black panel Fender or whatever. I, you know, from my perspective, um, there's what the amp is worth in terms of the market, et cetera, et cetera. But when someone sends me their amp, I try to treat the, the tweakers, the, the blues juniors, the pro juniors, whatever, the same way I treat, um, you know, the vintage ooh amps because it's someone's amplifier. It's their means of expression. It may be the only thing they can afford. All the more reason to make sure that it works and works well.